Renee, D and Renee's low carb cooking. And we're going to do our second part of our Thanksgiving, talking about Thanksgiving. Um, we have a few um, recipe ideas for you today, um, a little bit more um, of some untraditional Thanksgiving recipes, um, mixed with some traditional ones. Um, however, um, I think anything goes for any holiday and depending on what kind of audience you have, um, I think you should just make things that you really enjoy or maybe that your company enjoys um, or that you're a pro at in the kitchen or maybe you're going to delegate it out and get everybody to bring a little bit of something. Um, so today um, we're going to start with I prepared a salmon and if any of you had seen my pre-show video I had had the whole Chinook salmon head and all um, on the table with all my assorted veggies that we were going to do um, to show you. Um, however, when that salmon came out of the oven and I wanted to prepare my platter um, to show you how I would serve it if I was going to have company, I was already too late. Um, my 17 year old son had already dived into it and um, so I had no pretty platter to show you my fish. <laughs> Hi Renee! Hi, Dee. I, I was having a little, um, you know, technical difficulty. <laughs> no <worries>. uh, <laughs> So, um, Dee has been working up a storm. So, as she was talking about, we um, last week was super traditional, and this week is some different options. And I have always, you know, We've always had different options at our at our dinner table. Um, I grew up vegetarian, but we did eat fish. So salmon was a big part of our diet. And I love, love, love salmon. Of course, we always want to, you know, in today's world, we have to be super picky and get wild salmon, which uh, probably is much more prevalent up there in Canada than um, we have to really search for it and pay big dollars down here. <laughs> you too. Do you? Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so I want to say hi to a couple of people. We have Myra and Patty and Lorraine. And so if you guys are online, would you please give us a hello and hit the like and heart button and um, most of all, if you will share this broadcast, that's how we grow our audience and how we uh, can, you know, ultimately bring more and more of these types of shows your way. So, Dee, I was looking through all these amazing uh, photographs that you sent me, um, and I I have the recipes all ready today. All you have to do is type in recipe and it should be working. Uh, Facebook Live, yay, yay, yay. Um, so it looks like we got a couple more people here. Oh, yeah, Cher has joined us now. Nice to see you. Um, okay, so... D, let's. Uh, I heard you talking about your your salmon got uh, got absconded with, huh? <laughs> yes, the vultures were uh, circling. They were waiting for um, food preparation. So that is um, part of the salmon that I wanted to present to you. But that's okay. We can talk a little bit about um, the salmon and. And yes, in Canada, it is hard to find um, high quality salmon at a good price point. Um, so that was just something I wanted to touch on the reason why I actually had the whole salmon. Um, it was actually cheaper um, or more economical to buy the whole salmon than it was to purchase the just a fillet piece of salmon. Now, the nice thing about whole salmons, you do not have to buy them with the head on as you are also paying, you're usually paying per pound or per, per kilogram. Um, so if you're not going to eat the cheap meat um, in the head, feel free to find ones that don't no longer have their eyeballs attached. Um, uh, I always look for descaled and cleaned. Um, it just makes your prep in the kitchen a lot faster, um, a lot easier, and of course, a lot less smelly. 
Um, so just um, those are just a few side notes. Now, there are probably experts that are going to watch this show today that could do fish way better than I. I am a prairie farm girl uh, raised on um, a beef farm, just so <laughs> you all know. <laughs> fish is not my um, specialty. However, we would catch um, on our local dam, we would catch a fish called um, pike. And I don't know if any of you um, have ever seen a pike. Um, they are monsters with huge teeth. Um, and you can, they're, they're, they're fine to eat, pickle, can, whatever you're going to do with them. So this salmon here today um, was stuffed in the inside. I should have taken a picture of it while it was open to show you. And then I scored each side of that salmon. This was a really big salmon. Um, and so I did a two, about a two centimeter score. And you can see I did about six um, down each side. And so that I, I stuffed, um, along there with my herbs and my garlic and my lemon. And I did the exact same thing in the inside. The only difference is in the inside, I sliced my lemon, I had lemon slices in the middle. And in the um, slots there that you see, I actually had even diced the rind um, and added it in there with my parsley and dill and salt and pepper and garlic. Um, the really neat thing about fish is that any herb goes. So you don't actually need a, a specific recipe per se for fish. You can also rub with olive oil. You can, you know, inside and out, salt and pepper. This one I did not just because I am currently watching my oil intake. So depending on what phase or what part of a low carb journey you're on, um, you do not need oil. Of course, if you want to use it, you may. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, this was a very thick fish. And so if I would encourage you to all have a meat thermometer, a kitchen thermometer, um, the recommendation for the fish is in the thickest part, you want it to reach 145 degrees. Um, another great way to tell if fish is done is that it has a nice opaque color and then it'll flake very easily with a fork. So there's kind of my little schmeal on, on salmon. <laughs> Well, um, uh, I'm a I'm a huge, huge salmon fan. I also love to cook salmon in a lot of different ways. Um, so yes, um, you can grill it, you can put it on the barbecue, you can bake it in the oven, you can saute it, however, however you do it, um, you know, it, it always turns out well and, and you don't have to cook it for a very long time, which is, is pretty cool. I've actually, you know, done exactly what what D did, um, but I I sliced it in half and then you know did you stuff it with like lemon slices and all that D? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my that's my favorite way. I love to do it on the barbecue that way. Well, and two, if you're going to be moving that fish a lot too, just like you've seen roast wraps um, wrapped in butcher's twine or things like that, you can do that with fish too. So you can overstuff the inside of a fish and then just tie your um, your butcher's string around it to hold it all in so it doesn't fall fall apart that's a that's another way um to do it um fit in the land of fish um you know you can look at hundreds of fish recipes in every temperature and minutes i mean they i it's it's pretty hard to wreck fish <laughs> it's yeah, pretty yeah. user friendly other than dry it out don't overcook it <laughs> so in, in my house, if you get the little end bits nice and blackened, the men in my house, that's their favorite part. Their favorite part. Yeah, and they will they will eat the fins um, as well. <laughs> so I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. All right. So this salad was so darn pretty that I had to, I, I can't seem to get my people, uh, you know, we're round and round here that I, I don't mean to be uh, making this go all the way around here, but I keep wanting to get my, my, I didn't, I didn't load everybody properly. Sorry guys. So I'm going to, in order to see the picture big, I'm going to take myself. Get in line. Get in line. Um, oh, is that you D? <laughs> Sorry. Dee's in her office at work. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so um, this salad looks so delish, and it's called Dee's Favorite Salad. So um, tell us about this, Dee. So the salad that you see before us is the salad that was made in my mom's kitchen and still is forever and ever. That is what a salad looks like in my mom's kitchen for a regular salad. You can be guaranteed that this one will be on her table for an everyday meal and for a special meal. And if I am, am lucky enough to have a meal in my mom's kitchen, she will also try to enlist me to make this salad. <laughs> because my mom, I'm gonna pick on my mom here, she's so funny because she, she always talks about how much work it is to cut and clean and make that pretty salad and then your darn dad just eats it all up. <laughs> So that's exactly why we make them. So I'm I'm so excited that um, my darn dad eats up all my mom's um, hard work because it's healthy and he needs it. Um, but it is such, you know, it is, it's, it is a pretty salad and it is a very basic salad. Um, it is also a salad that has a lot of crunch, a lot of texture and a lot of color. And I'm a really big fan of that. And if you happen to be following a program or you have limits or restrictions on what types of veggies, that you can have in your day. The beautiful thing about this salad is the base is romaine lettuce and it is full of freebies like radishes and cucumbers and celery. And so you can just put the tomatoes and the peppers aside if you are already at your volume um, for your select and occasional and still enjoy the rest of that salad. Um, the green onions on this side as well. There's green onions in the salad but I love green onions as a garnish. And if you are sitting at a table and you're visiting and you're not really hungry, but you, you want to keep picking just because there's conversation and picking is kind of what we do. Um, chew on some green onion, the whole thing. Don't really like just, just, and it will slow you down. Um, but green onions aren't as, as, as hot and peppery as, um, whole onions. So, um, it does work and, and they're great with dressing as well. Um, I am also, I, I don't like salad that is pre-dressed. I never have. It's a, it's just a personal um, choice for myself. And so I never address a salad in my home. And so I prefer really simple dressings. Like I will, uh, my favorite is the olive oil, some apple cider vinegar, some fresh garlic and Italian, Italian blend seasonings are my favorite. That, that is my go-to. Um, so another thing I just want to talk about, I mean, by all means, use your favorite. Um, but again, too, olive oil is something that is really common in most of our recipes, but usually not necessary. So if you've used olive oil somewhere else in your day and you don't have any left for your salad, that's where um, the sugar-free bottle type kinds of dressing can come in and, and save you a little bit. You can, you can still have a little bit of that. They're not my first choice, but they are they they can assist in um edible salad as well and if you really don't like those then by all means try a little salt and pepper and just fresh herbs on your salad give it a go like that first and especially if you're a little bit picky or if you just really want to learn what kind of flavors you like a great way to do that is herbs on salad alone because then you really taste the herb and it's not masked by the oil or by any vinegars or garlics or other or other bases um, in your dressing. So I, I encourage you to try that. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And, and you know what? I used to be just like this huge, like, give me the more blue cheese, the more creamier the dressing, the more dressing. You know, I don't even know if I tasted my food because I was just having dressing on everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that's really what ideal protein. One of the one of the main, main many things that it brought to me was, you know, quit using all these all this dairy stuff, all these condiments that are you know really filled with sugars and fats and and things that aren't servicing me. And um, I would rather use my calories elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I've really, really gotten used to just a very simple, and I always buy a very expensive olive oil because I love the way they taste. 
Although after I went to Sicily this summer, there is a Sicilian olive oil at Trader Joe's. It's like $8 and amazing. Um, nice. So best olive oils I've ever tasted. Um, we're in Sicily. Amazing. Nice. But um, yeah, it was awesome. Okay. So if you are just getting online, um, remember to push the share button, share this out to your Facebook fellows. If you're uh, a clinic, please share it on your Facebook page and um, hit the like button, hit the heart button. The more you, the more you do that, the more Facebook really sends it out to us. Um, okay, so we have a few more people on here. Hi, Susan, and we've got Sophia and Betty. Thanks for joining us today. Um, any questions that you have, please put them in the comment section and we will be sure to answer them before we finish. Okay, Dee, so let's, uh, we got the salad. So next up, oh, this looks amazing. So that is a version of green bean casserole. So again, this is another casserole that is was a traditional Thanksgiving casserole in, in my home growing up, done with, um, we didn't, so I, I see in the States a big product is French fried onions or French's fried onions or something like that. So instead of that, we had actual onion rings placed on the top um, of the green bean casserole. And that's how my mom baked it with the traditional Campbell's um, mushroom soup. And the interesting thing about green bean casserole is that, that it was developed by Campbell's itself to boost the sales of their soup. And I think it worked for them because all these years later, it is um, still a very popular casserole. So, this one in particular, instead of mushroom soup, I used an IP chicken soup. So once again, it will work with the mushroom soup. It also tastes absolutely fantabulous with the chicken soup. And instead of onions, because we're not allowed to have any caramelized onions, that is caramelized fennel on top with some garlic, salt and pepper and a few of the fennel fronds. And um, it is delicious and it adds such flavor to the green bean casserole. The beans themselves, you can use fresh, you can use canned, you can use French beans, you can use chicken broth or water with your chicken soup, you can use mushroom broth with your mushroom soup or water, you can put a little bit of fried amino acids into your soup base, um, really simple. Um, easy casserole. The the effort, the most effort that you're going to have to do is um, just um, caramelize that fennel a little bit in a pan before you start to assemble the rest of your ingredients. So um, super yummy. I had it for lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you that Sarah Mulero is the one that turned me on to the um, sautéed fennel. And I love, love, love to uh, saute that with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of olive oil, and then I put that with my salmon. So it does, it, it really takes on that, that flavor of the caramelized onions, which I love onions pretty much in almost everything. And so <laughs> it takes on that flavor of like sweet caramelized, caramelized mm -hmm. onions. You know, definitely, um, definitely check it out, try it out. And and fennel is one of those things where I love it, just like sliced on my fresh salad. And in fact, you know, I can find it at the Whole Foods salad bar here, which is wonderful because it's already sliced up. I don't have to do anything to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know you can bake it and and do different things to it. So that's I, I had actually wanted to cook that salmon on a bed of radishes and fennel like fennel chunks and so for my presentation but I didn't have enough <laughs> so, <It happens>. so. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna shoot him next time <laughs> all right so coming up and and who is Karen because these are Karen's roasted Brussels sprouts um, so just for privacy, I, I, I won't share Karen's last name. Um, so Karen is a, a program user, a former program user. 
that way back in, I believe, 2011, um, had posted her dinner one day on a sharing page, and it really piqued my interest. So I had asked her, you know, what what is that? Like, what's in it? And she had said, oh, it's just my roasted Brussels sprouts. And she puts garlic and sugar-free jam and mustard and salt and pepper and some extra virgin olive oil and roast them all up. And at first I was like, jam, jam with mustard? Like, ooh, like, come on. Um, but I tried it and I was hooked. I, I was hooked from that day forward. And so anytime I would make this dish as a side dish, I would just refer it to as Karen's because <laughs> because I, I have to give all credit to Karen. And um, the really neat thing about the the how you do your it doesn't matter what mustard you use you can use a Dijon you can just use a plain old yellow you know you can use your fancy gray poupon you can use whatever I you know how it doesn't matter how inexpensive or how fancy schmancy your mustard is and the jam also um so of course I the only sugar-free jam that I I know of commercially is the Walden Farms but the one pictured you I did them with cranberry jam this time just because with Thanksgiving that you can use cranberry jam in your turkey sandwiches um, but the cranberry jam is fabulous in this roasted version um, but any um, of the jam works wonderful so if you were going to have some orange chicken with a side of, of brussels sprouts and I would use the orange orange jam in the in the brussels sprouts for example so um, a really it's so it's a really really simple um, and just really 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 tasty and um, and the same thing um, your size of your radishes or your brush sprouts, um, it doesn't matter. Um, really hard to ruin the smaller your veggies, the, the shorter the roasting time, the larger you just have to roast them a little bit longer. So um, I know that some folks really like their Brussels sprouts to have those nice brown crispy edges. And so they just, they, they will caramelize a little bit nicely um, as you roast them as well. So so let's, let's talk a little bit about um, the cranberry thing, because I have to tell you, like, cranberries on my turkey. Now, I can totally do cauliflower mash or celery root mash, but I would really like my cranberries. Have you tried the Walden Farms cranberry? I have. And actually, um, I that is Walden Farm cranberry that you see in the picture. So those Brussels sprouts were done with it. But I actually purchased the Walden um, Farms cranberry. Um, because I had done an apple sage bread um, for my turkey sandwiches. And so I have a, a lettuce and cranberry jam um, turkey sandwich um, graphic and, and bread recipe. And it was pretty fabulous to tell you the truth. Um, I am not, you know, I don't like to push any sweeteners on anybody. And in fact, the very first time that I did a low carb program, I thought they were all disgusting. <laughs> I really did because you just you're not used to that taste however the jams are a really neat um addition in a low carb lineup because they actually melt so a little goes a long way so in a recipe like this brussels sprouts um you you melt the jam a little bit before mixing the other ingredients so a little goes a long way and then the same on on the sandwich and um yesterday i had seen a pdf file shared out um for some program users and in it, um, it had stated that um, they had made a, a dressing that or cranberry sauce that used real cranberries and had stated that, you know what, go ahead. It's just one day. Eat it. Um, and I'm going to tell you that I um, disagree with that. Um, I think that you put all this hard work and effort into it and we're giving you options to help you stay on. Um, so I would just bypass those real cranberries because those will wreck your week. And I would just, you know, in the intern, use something like the Walden Farms cranberries to get you through a little bit of tartness, a little bit of flavor. And um, the real cranberries are going to be there for you next holiday when you're when you're all done. Yeah, you know, what, Dee, I totally agree with you. And as a coach, um, I do not coach my clients to go off on holidays or take the day off. And people ask me that and, and we discuss it, you know, look, this is your journey. You get to do it any way that you want to, but does it send you off on the wrong trail? It really does. And it's just not worth it. I mean, you've put in all this time, you know, maybe you started in August or September and now you've got 20 or 30 or 40 pounds off of you 
and for one day you're gonna wreck your mojo don't yeah. do it just yeah. just hang in there roll through it um use all these recipes find different flavors and know that this is a temporary thing that you're doing and then uh when you get back to maintenance there's going to be a hundred other, you know, holiday events you get to go to and and learn to traverse those things, um, and and work with your coach on on maintenance. So um, yeah, I'm with D also. All <laughs> right, D. Um, so this looks delish. Um, tell us about this. So that is my version of a coconut cream. And I want to tell you right off the start that you don't have to use the roasted and grated jicama if you don't want to. But roasted and grated jicama is my faux coconut. And I really, I um, played around with jicama because it was the vegetable that I could get closest to coconut. And I really wanted some coconut because I had made a Nanaimo bar. And so I needed coconut to make my, my base. And so I discovered that jicama could get the job done. And since making the jicama faux coconut, it actually kind of becomes, it's it's really satisfying process for me. It does take a little bit of effort because you grate, you grate the jicama with a fine, um, I just do it with a box grater. It's it, I find it the quickest and easiest. And you squeeze all of the liquid as much as you can out of that jicama and then you fluff it back up on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and you spread it as even as you can. And then you basically are just drying it out in a really low temp oven. I do about 170. And depending on how full my baking sheet is, um, usually takes about one and a half hours. And then I, and you fluff it up about every 30 minutes and you get um, a nice kind of coconutty. Sometimes um, it gets a little more brown. This batch didn't get super brown, but it dried super nice. And so I added it to this coconut cream um, for real coconut texture. So um, it's good with or without, um, but I, I was really looking for the coconut texture. And so you don't um, recook the coconut once you just, you're just gonna fold your, um, your uh, faux coconut into your um, coconut cream. So it's, it's fun, um, it's easy. It's another one of those, it makes a big bowl for one serving. Um, and my only other um, tip on that is uh, measure your um, grated jicama once you have it fluff, fluffed up because um, it, it, do, it does shrink quite a bit. So one cup is going to only probably yield you about half a cup once it's dried. Yeah. Oh. What, and what other kinds of um, things do you use this, this faux jicama on? Well, so at Christmas time quite a few years ago, um, everybody's probably heard of a Nanaimo bar. Um, and it was a request. Not, every, not everybody. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I so, found this out last uh, last holiday when we were doing our Christmas or Thanksgiving event. I can't remember which. Um, and and we were talking about these bars. So tell us about those. Well, I actually don't really like the real deal. They're they're really sweet. They're really really sweet. But they have a, a chocolate coconut base and then they have a really creamy sweet filling and then a, and, a, and then a chocolate top um, onto them and so we I had um, a request to recreate I they wanted that chewy that chewy base with that really rich cream and so I used chocolate drink mix and faux, faux and jicama for the base and we used a pudding and flavored the middle for our cream and then melted um, uh, chocolatey coconut bar on the top for our chocolate top and it sets up really really nice um, and so if you were say for example in phase one it used three packets and some veggies and so you could simply divide it in three and nosh on that all day and you'd still be within within protocol um, another really fun and easy one is um, uh, a no-bake macaroon cookie with the jicama. So again, you melt a bar down like a chocolate mint or a chocolatey coconut, um, just with a little bit of liquid um, sweetener like a Da Vinci or a skinny syrup. And then you put the grated jicama in there and you mix it all in really well and then do little drop haystack cookies for like a fast macaroon cookie. Um, wow. you can, yeah, you can also That's bake it awesome. into cookies, into macaroon <laughs> So it just it gives texture. It's 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 really quite neat. And it, again, 
just like when you see sweet or savory recipes done with jicama, they really take on the flavor of whatever you put on it. So it's the same in the baking. Um, just today, actually, um, one of our clients left and she had purchased a bottle of cinnamon da Vinci. And, and I really don't look at the da Vinci wall um, a whole lot. And I said, oh, cinnamon da Vinci, thinking she's, you know, making fall coffees. And she said, well, yeah. She said, I just drizzle it over my my jicama slices. And then she doesn't need a sweetener and the cinnamon shaker. It's just a really fast, simple way, all in one. And I'm like, hey, great idea. <laughs> that is a great idea. So remember that when we are using these extras, um, you know, every clinic has their has their amount of extras that they use. My clinic's three. I think Dee's clinic is four. And um, so, you know, just, just understanding the extras, using that serving size. So really, even though it says zero on it, it's like 0.999. So yep. it's like one carb per serving. So just remember that all these things add up. Same way with gum and mints and stuff like that. Just get rid of that stuff. Absolutely. And I just, I want to, I, it's just, it's such an important thing. And it, it doesn't matter if you're doing an IP program, a different program, a low carb program, you need to know. Um, now, when I say um, I don't make up my own rules, the maximum four comes directly from Super Weekend Training and Mike Ciel. It they, they, they say absolutely four is the limit. And then you use your discretion with that as well. So if you have a client whose journal looks amazing and clean and they're still not getting the results that they want, they might be even really super sensitive to those sweeteners, those allowable sweeteners. And you need to, you know, you need to pull back on them and see if that is the difference maker. Um, another really big one is, is that sometimes clients don't understand what a serving size is, um, that it is individual to the product they're buying. So it might be a tablespoon, which is 15 milliliters. It might be an ounce, which is 30 milliliters. So you need to know mils and ounces and conversion, and you need to track. Um, one thing that you know, I, I talk about, I use Ideal Proteins maple syrup a lot. And one of the reasons is, is because a quarter cup is a serving. So the chances that you're going to use that full quarter cup in one serving is, is quite small. And um, it's quite a universal sweetener. And so I want clients to be able to use a little bit of that, but also the least amount um, possible. And so when you really start tracking these things, you know, we've had clients come back and say, oh man, I was like up more like around 10 or 12 because I was dumping Walden Farms coffee creamer in my coffee and not measuring. And then I was using Splenda packets and, and so on and so forth. Or you know what? Oh, I chew a pack of gum a day and just not thinking of those kind of things. We had a client before using sugar-free ketchup and not measuring it. And then when she started measuring it, she's like, oh man, I use like eight servings of ketchup a day, you know? So the, the ketchup diet, you know? And so really it become it's really important. Um, I don't think you should never have it if you enjoy it. Um, but there is also a, a few recipes that circulate on Pinterest or in the other, I, you know, if, um, from ideal protein sites that, you know, some of them use up to uh, six or more servings of sweetener in one cup of veg. Huge flag, like huge flag. Don't do it. Don't, don't you know, like adjust it to fit within the parameters. The other thing, I know I'm going on a little bit here, but when you have too, when you have too much sweetener, too much extra carbs, that is enough to get a glycemic response and get the hunger and craving cycle going again. We don't want that to happen to you when you're when you're in clean and you're in good and and too many extras can really do that. And so, you know, you might have a sweet serving of of apple crisp or caramel apples or whatever, you know, whatever awesome thing that you found. Um, and then, you know, an hour later, you're like, I need something more and I need something more. Beware of those things. If they trigger the craving, if they trigger this snacking, you, you that's your that's your sign. I, I need to find an alternative to that particular snack. Totally agree. We are on the same page. Yeah. All right, as usual, we're running over already. Ah. And so this is like, this looks amazing. We were supposed to add this to last week and I forgot. Um, I didn't see it actually, it came through a little bit later. So, um, <laughs> gee, tell us, this is, looks like 
Amazing. Um, so these um, chocolatey caramel pumpkin muffins, I, I don't even remember what I called them, isn't that horrible? Um, was a request um, along with the overnight oatmeal that we had seen last week from a client who brought um, in the base recipe and said, here, here you go, I want these. <laughs> and so this was the mashed rutabaga with the chocolatey caramel mug cake um, and a plain pancake makes two, it, it made 16 mini muffins. So it would easily make four big muffins. So you'd get two big muffins per unrestricted serving um, or eight mini muffins um, per unrestricted serving. Um, so really easy to make ahead, easy to eat on the go. Um, you can add, so you could add a little extra sweetener to them, drizzle it over top, whatever, whatever you like, um, whatever you desire, of course, cinnamon. Um, the pumpkin pie spices in them. They bake up beautifully. The rutabaga puree um, serves as the, the real pumpkin. So um, they were um, some delicious little morsels. And so I did show them in their mini form, but once again, they will bake into a loaf. Um, they would bake into a cookie. Um, and of course they would bake into a muffin. So just another, just another way to use up that rutabaga puree. So I think rutabaga puree is my new favorite um, occasional uh, veggie to have prepared them to use for something now. I haven't tried it yet, so that's that's on my list here. So if you enjoyed this show and you want more holiday recipes or you have um, more more ideas, you have things that you really love that you would love to um, have decreate for you, let us know what those are. Um, I have one last picture to show you, um, which um, was the, the final final for um, Dee's uh, beautiful. So there is the combination of all the recipes that we were showing you today. And that is um, a half a serving of the beans and a half a serving of the roasted Brussels sprouts and radishes. Um, forgive me, I did not measure the salmon. I just put it on the plate for picture purposes. <laughs> I did eat it, however. <laughs> I had um, supper for lunch today. Um, so, and I actually have that big, beautiful salad in my fridge at home. And that's going to be um, a, a, my supper. <laughs> <laughs> well, that so. is awesome. And um, this was such a, a great show. I know last week we had we had numbers of viewers that we've never seen before. So we really appreciate when you hit the share button and you share this out to everybody, you share this out to your clinics and your groups. Um, we so appreciate it. And um, Next week, we'll be back on Wednesday with more great recipes for fall. Um, I think we've, we've done uh, two holiday shows now. So this was part two. Last week was part one, a more traditional holiday dinner. Um, so again, if you have recipes that you want to have um, reconstructed, let us know what those are. And if you want the recipes from today's broadcast, all you have to do is type in the comments recipe, hit the heart button, hit the like button. And um, D, as always, it's so fun to hang out with you. I always feel like we never have enough time, but um, this has been great. And any last tips before we go? Well, you know, we I would talk for a whole nother hour. So um, if you have any questions or comments, um, just leave them there and we will we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, I did want to say that last week we had I had a request for chili in the comments, some other things. I am working on some chili, um, so like a bean substitute. Um, so stay tuned um, for that. Um, Renee and I will have a chat and we will decide what um, we will present to you. Um, I want to thank all of you for my pa your patience. Is um, I've tried to start doing a little preview, a little live preview of um, what's up and coming, and I'm really terrible at it. Um, so as I as I practice, <laughs> as I practice, they'll get better. I I promise you. As I'm taping my food like this and trying to, <laughs> to figure out. Um, so yes, if there is. 
We all want to see what Dee's cooking. Yeah. So that's usually coming up on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. So watch for that. And then, uh, of course, our Wednesday program. Okay, everybody. Goodbye. So great to see you. And we will see you next Wednesday. Thanks, Renee. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.